Hello everyone and welcome on a new episode in today's analysis. Today I'm going to analyze one of the most iconic characters in all cinematic history, Indiana Jones from the film franchise with the same name. George Lucas who also created Star Wars and made a fantastic job in creating the character and Harrison Ford, the same actor who portrayed Han Solo in Star Wars also did a great job in portraying the character to begin with. In this episode I'm going to analyze Indiana Jones' journey from a simple archaeology teacher to the treasure hunter and global hero that he has ultimately become. Now, with no further introduction, let's begin. Much about Indiana Jones' early life is completely unknown, except that he was born as Henry Walton Jones Jr. on July 1, 1899, in Princeton, New Jersey, along to his parents, Henry Jones Sr. and Anna Jones. Growing up, he also had a younger sister, Susie Jones, who tragically died at an early age due to her not being strong enough. Eventually, Henry managed to finish his studies at the University of Chicago and fought for the United States during World War I and married with a woman, Dreda Campbell, which together he had a very happy life. However, tragedy appeared in Jones's life as his mother and wife were both killed by the Spanish flu. Filled with grief, Henry Jr. moved to Bedford, Connecticut, where he became a teacher at the Marshall College and changed his name into Indiana Jones, hoping to let the past behind him and still remain in touch with his father. He used all the fortune that he managed to acquire throughout his life to found numerous expeditions across the globe, requiring numerous artifacts in order to gain for himself a famous reputation in both the US and abroad. Eventually, by 1935, he was nearly killed by a Chinese in the crime lord who desired for Jones to find the remnants of an ancient Chinese emperor. Thankfully, he managed to escape from the massacre along his Chinese sidekick, Short Round, and a nightclub singer, Willie Scott, managing to escape from China into India. Nevertheless, he came in contact and in conflict with Mola Ram, the leader of the cult known as the Tujis who enslaved innumerable children and wanted to use them in order to find the Sankara stones, an ancient artifacts that he hoped it could help him to conquer and rule the entire world. Thankfully for all of us, he failed. Indiana Jones managed to save the children and return back to their families. One year later, in 1936, he will go searching for the Ark of the Covenant along with Marian Ravenwood, while racing against Ren Belloc, a French archaeologist who betrayed friends for the Nazi Germany, who desired to use the Ark to speak with God, and the Nazis to use it to help them in World War II. Thankfully for all of us, it failed. The US government managed to confiscate the Ark and keep it safe and sound from the world. Two years later, by 1938, Indiana Jones would go one more adventure, this time with his father, Henry Sr., while searching for the Holy Grail, while racing against Walter Donovan, a billionaire who betrayed the United States for the Nazi Germany, who desired to find the Grail in order to acquire immortality, and the Nazis to use it to make themselves immortal as well. Thankfully, they failed, and Indiana Jones managed to use the Grail in order to cure his father, who was mortally wounded by the Nazis. Between the events of the third and the fourth film, Indy fought for the US during World War II, and his father tragically died in 1951. But before we begin to explain the events of the fourth film, we can ask ourselves, is Indiana Jones good? Well, I honestly say yes. Because, to be honest, at first he might have seemed like he did all he did for fame and glory, but nevertheless his actions brought a long-lasting positive impact upon the world, as he fought against numerous villains who desired to use the very power for themselves, and yet not only to be killed by the very power they saw. Not to mention that Indiana Jones genuinely loved his family and even loved his country. So in the end, the answer to the question, is Indiana Jones good? Honestly, yes. Now, by 1957, he will be dragged into one more at this time with a boy named Matt Williams, who is revealed to be Marian Ravenwood's son, while racing against Irina Spalko in the Soviet Union, searching for the lost kingdom of Akator, who desired to use it in order to acquire all the knowledge in the universe. Throughout this adventure, he discovered that Matt Williams is also his son, Harry Jones III, who Marian got pregnant with following the events of the first film. And in the end, the Soviets have failed, as Irina Spalko was killed by the very power she saw as well. And Indiana Jones happily married with Marian, and have finally had a life and a family that he always desired. Nevertheless, this love and happiness was also short-lived, as tragedy struck again when his son was listed to fight in the Vietnam War and tragically died in the 1960s, causing an immense rift between his parents who nearly come to a divorce. Yet, by 1969, now the 70-year-old Indiana Jones came in one last adventure along his goddaughter, Elena Shaw, while racing against the neo-Nazi scientist at NASA, Jorgen Waller, who desired to find the use the Dial of Destiny to go back in time 
kill Hitler, take over the Nazi Germany and win World War II on the world the world. Thankfully, he failed as well and he went way back in time, more than was necessary. Nevertheless, throughout this adventure, Hindi managed to save the world once again. So in the end, chronologically speaking, who was Indiana Jones? He was nothing more but a man who lost everything in life, a man who desired to start a new life, and one that would leave his mark upon the world everywhere he acted, a man that could be easily seen as one of the most iconic and greatest protagonists to ever appear in cinema. Thank you all for continuing this safe new episode in today's analysis. I hope you all guys enjoyed. Please subscribe to my channel, leave your opinion in the comments, leave a like, and bye. Or, um, prepare to meet Kali.